Hi, I'm Nettie Price, and I create whimsical, vibrant, and fun sparkling art. Thank you for joining my painting tutorial series. Today, we're going to be painting a vase of poppies, which are so pretty and a whole lot of fun. I think what I love most about this painting is its simplicity, not only in composition, but in color. So let's get our paints out, and we're going to go through what we need to create our painting. Hey, everybody. Here we have the materials that we're going to use for the painting. This is a 16 by 20, one inch gallery wrap canvas. I have the Artist Brushes Premium. These are available in the link in the video. And the one, the round brush, we're going to be using a flat brush. There's also um, a wide variety of finer brushes. Some of these we will use some, maybe not. The colors that we're going to use are white, black, red, blue, and yellow. Just the primary colors. We're going to mix all of our tertiary colors and our secondary colors just from our primary colors. Um, you don't have to use this whole kit. Um, comes together. Now what's not included in the kit that you will need is a Sharpie marker. And I like the fine tip ones. This is a permanent ink. It's a fine point Sharpie marker and you'll need some water. So I'm going to take my flat brush. I already have paint on it and I'm going to be using black. Now the way we're going to do it, there's going to be the vase the poppies, and the leaves. So we want to have the background line and we want the leaves and the poppies to come out into the composition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the vase and the vase is pretty simple. The vase is going to be sitting on a table and I want to have the top of the vase below the center line. So I'm going to go to the center and come down and the shape of the vase is kind of fun has a little bit of an arch on the top. Make it about the width of your hand and then I want to bring the vase down so that it comes in. Almost like a cup. On the other side it's going to come down like a cup. I'm going to go across, down, down, and I want to have a bottom curve on the bottom of the vase. Okay, so this is our vase. Actually, I think I'm going to make it just a little bit longer so I can fill that in down here. There we go. And then I'm going to do a strip in the middle here. kind of has that curve to it. Now all these curves, this curve and this curve need to match and then this curve goes opposite. Then we're coming down, coming down. Now I want the background to be right above the bottom of the vase and if I'm going to do a stripe here I want it to be in the middle. Notice I'm going in the middle of my two stripes and I'm going to come right across like that. And make my black line. And then I want to take it across and continue on the other side of the vase directly that way. Okay. Coming down, coming down. Now I want to do my poppies and the poppies I'm going to do an odd number of poppies and I want to place them in this area here. So I'm going to go up from the middle of the vase and just kind of go over here. This is a nice spot. Now I want to just do a big circle and the poppies are going to be really fun. So I want to make sure that I do a nice thick black line because we want a lot of room for the leaves. I'm going to go around, 
Then I'm going to do five of them. So here's one, and I want them all different sizes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, notice that none of them are right in the center, and they're all kind of ob sh odd shapes. <laughs> ob shapes. So I'm going to make them nice and thick, nice and thick, and I want the center to be black. Now I'm going to put the center off center. Notice how this circle in the middle is not in the middle on this one. Now this one, you can do it on maybe one or two, but not all of them. We want them to be individuals. And then I'm going to put this one here. And this one is going to be, I kind of think of them as like faces. Nice and thick, and then that's the center. And here's the other one. Poppies are really f easy, very easy to paint because you can pretty much make them any color you want. You can make them any shape you want. And this one, I'm gonna put the center right there. Okay, now we're going to do the leaves. And the leaves I wanna fit some in the front, some in the back. So this leaf I'm going to put in the back, and the leaves are kind of long and pointy. I'm going to do a leaf down here. Right here. I'm going to do a smaller leaf up here, kind of jetting out. Now remember, these are all growing out of the vase. So I'm going to do a smaller leaf here. I'm going to do one coming down over the front of the vase. Now don't worry about that line there, we're going to paint over it. And then I'm going to do another one coming out this way. And I'm just using the, the width of my brush. Let's see here. I think I'm going to put another one here. And you kind of just think of where you want to put them. There. And maybe I'll put a small one here behind the poppy. There's that. I'm going to go around and make these nice and thick. And Feel free to stop the video if you have to, just so you can take some more time. Make sure that you don't have any puddles and that you are going over your lines. I'm gonna bring this down. Okay. Okay, here we go. This is the poppies. The poppies are all dry. I let it sit for a little while there's um, nothing glistening. It's perfectly dry. That's really, really important um, that you let it dry before you try to put the color on. Otherwise, the color will get dark and yucky and it won't be even any fun at all. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start with um, the poppy leaves. And what I want to use is red, yellow, and white. And I'm going to use the rounded brush. This is like a Just a quarter inch rounded brush. And the kind of stroke that I want to use, I'm going to leave the inside is going to be where the dots go for the poppy. And then the outside is going to be like a wavy kind of brush stroke. And what I want to do is I don't want to mix the color so that it's totally flat. I just want to dip my brush in the color and then go from there. So what I'm going to do is get the red and the yellow and the white. Now you can just put it right on your, if you don't have these, just put it right on your plate. And I'm going to mix it out of the containers just because I like doing it. Um, I found these are really easy to work with. Um, okay, so what I want to do is red, yellow, and white 
And now I'm gonna take it and do a wavy stroke. Now don't worry about it the first time because you need to be able to have enough white in any color to cover the black. But I wanna have the color strokes kind of go in there. Now, if you don't want to get your white dirty, just take it and put it, put a whole glob of it on the paper plate as well. Um, sometimes I use the brush, sometimes I'll use the back end of the brush to get the paint out. It just, just depends. I try to, I'm going to mix it all together anyway, so um, for me it doesn't really matter. Um, all right, so I'm going to dip it in the white, the yellow, and the red. And now I want to, my center of the poppy is a little bit off center. So I want to go and leave that area black. The center of the flower is black. I'm going to come around like this. And notice it's off center. Now I'm getting a lot of paint on there. And we're doing just the first layer, covering over it, and let it be. Now I'm going to go on to the next poppy. I'm getting a lot of paint on there. Now this one, the center, is up here, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go around and make these really fun, and then the center of the poppy is there. Get some more. Mix it right on the canvas. I like to leave the brush stroke visible. Don't try to overwork it. I'm just going to let it go. Let it dry. Remember with these acrylics you want to do layers. So I'm going around making my squiggly lines. You can make them a little bit bigger if you want and then leave the center open. The center is going to be black. And now I am putting some more on there. Notice I'm not mixing the paint that much. I just want to put it on there and let it do its thing. Now we have a nice thick black line, so there's plenty of room to do your wiggle. I'll leave the center black and then fill in where that is. Now these are stylized, which I like. I might go back in with some more pink, but I just want to get the foundation of the colors that I want to use. I'm going around, we're going to keep the center black and fill in the inside of the flower. I want to let that dry. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to have the background to be very colorful and now that I have all this paint on my brush this is one trick that I do to save time is that I want to do the background with this color. Now here is the very rigid leaf the green leaf. I'm going to do the background first. So I'm, I want to add some curves to it. That's the whole point right here. Why you make the line thick? Because you're, you're doing it by default. You're using the negative space. Now I just want to have, lay some color there. Maybe I'll take it out to the edge. Now I'm going to take, I still have the green and yellow on my paintbrush and I want to add some highlights in, with yellow and white um, for my leaves. Clean out my brush, get some more paper towels. So when I'm cleaning out my brush, notice I haven't even used the water yet because Part of using the color wheel is having just a little bit of the extra paint in there to kind of um, mute and make 
mix your colors with the primary colors. So I have most of the paint off, but not all of it. And I wanna get some of the yellow and white. Get in there and get some white. And then I wanna do some highlights on the leaves. Just kinda of in there, that's a lot of paint. But notice I'm doing real, a uh, real brush, brush stroke-ish kind. That's a little bit too, too light, so I'm going to add a little bit of blue in there. And I want to do an extra layer on the leaves anyway, so kind of mixing it in there on the canvas, making sure I have plenty of paint on my brush. And now I'm adding the lighter yellow and then I go in and get some of the blue so then it mixes so I still have the blue but yet it's mixing to make the green on there. I'm going to go and, and create some more depth in the, in the leaves. Get some yellow and white, do some highlights here and now I'm going to get some blue and go underneath, underneath the leaf. So the highlight is on the top and the shadow is underneath. I'm gonna get some more and cover over. Okay, so they're coming along nicely. All right, now I'm gonna clean out my brush and I think I'm going to make like a light blue vase with a white stripe in the middle and on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is do the white stripe first. I'm just going to take white right out of my container and go around, making it the width of the paintbrush. And I'm going to do another one down here. Now, I'm gonna take some of that white off. Take some blue. I'm gonna put some more blue on my plate. And mix it right on the canvas. Cut in real close with the black line. Here, I'm gonna cut in close as well. Now, I've already done the background for the vase. So I'm going to come in close, go up top, and just fill that in. I'm going to get some more blue, more white, and do the bottom part of the vase. I want to make sure my lines come down. Here the line comes down into the black. Now I'm going to take some white and I'm going to do like a highlight over here and then take it down just like that. I really like this color so I'm going to do some of the background up here in the corner and go around cutting close to the flower and go around the side there. And the orange is still is not dry, so I'm just going to kind of stay away because we don't want to mix orange and blue. You're going to get mud. That's no fun. Mud is no fun. I'm going to do some blue over here and take the rest of the white that I have. See how the yellow is coming through there? It's really pretty. That's why I'm not too concerned when the colors get in and mix e with each other because that's kind of what I want. That's why I just go in there and get it out because sometimes you get something that's really unexpected and pretty. Now just so you know in case you're wondering we are going to draw in the stems with the sharpie marker so don't even think about the stems right now it's not important. I want to get the rest of this off here 
and cut into the curves on the poppies. Get most of this paint off of here. I'm gonna go into my white, get some more white, and put it onto the plate. I'm gonna put it over here on the paper plate. And I wanna put some white in the background. I love white in color. It's really pretty. Okay, we're gonna take a break. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we're still filling in the background. I have white and light blue on my brush. I think I'm gonna do the base in the front here. I think I'm gonna do it in a light yellow and white. I think that's gonna look really pretty because then those colors will pick up on the inside of the poppies. So I'm gonna continue on. I think I'm gonna do the blue and I'm just gonna add a little bit of red to it to make it a nice purplish color. Because red and blue make purple. I'm gonna take mostly blue, just a touch of red and a whole lot of white and I wanna mix it in here and blend it in with my lighter blue. I'm coming in here and getting really close. I'm, I don't wanna get into that green because it's not dry yet. So I'm just gonna let it be. There's colors that you like and you can get close to, colors that you can't. Whenever you have a complementary color, you don't want to mix it when you're doing your background, otherwise it's going to turn to mud. I'm coming down through here. And see now I can go into this blue with the purple because it's they're both they're next to each other. All right, I'm going to come out here. Maybe do some more over here. Coming close around the curve of the poppy. And I like the pink. Maybe I'll do some pink out here with touches of blue in it. I think that's pretty. Get some more white. Make it a little bit lighter because the poppies are gonna be mostly red. And see how I kind of get both sides of the brush when I'm coming down, I'm leaving the brush strokes and adding some white in here. Now this pink and this orange, I can kind of come in there. That's not going to hurt anything. Plus this is pretty dry. So now I'm going to show you something new. This is like a brush stroke that I use to kind of create um, almost like a, a transition between the colors. It's, it's like a ray that comes out. I really like doing that. And that. That way you can piecemeal colors together without having to blend them. It's almost like a fence. It works. I'm gonna come down here. But you just have to be careful that your paint is dry and that, you know, like I wouldn't do that into the green if it wasn't dry. So it's dry, well, it's kind of dry. It's a little dry, not quite dry enough. So I'm just gonna steer clear there. And now I wanna go up, wanna get some more white out of here. So, I think I'm gonna put some of this color down in the front here. Get it off the paintbrush and scoop it right out of there. Now I know I said yellow and white and I will and that'll work. I'm just gonna let it go and I wanna get some of the blue and the red and I'm gonna come in here because I can, I can do that in with, with the orange. I'm coming in close and I don't want to cover up my black line so I'm just patting in there I'm going to do some of that gray strokes 
there. Come back here. It's almost like filling in a puzzle or filling in a, a spot, a shape. You know, like right here, I'm just looking at this spot right here. I'm not looking at anything else. Now I'm gonna cover here. And I wanna make it a little bit lighter, so I'm just gonna take some white and come over here, come down the slope. And this green, yeah, a little bit. But another trick is that if it's not quite dry, you can kind of go over it with more paint. Just make sure you have enough paint on your brush. Okay, we're almost finished with the background. I just have some spots here. I'm gonna get some more white on my brush and fill it in. Sometimes when I'm going into another color, I will do like a, just a spot, just a spot. That's another transition to mix, to have two colors next to each other is to kind of ease the color in there with just one brush stroke. Now I'm not going to do that with the green, that dangerous. Uh, it's just dangerous, but this green is dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm doing short, quick strokes and notice how I went in there. And that takes guts and that's what makes it painterly is to be able to go into a color that is complementary and to make it work. So if you do something like that, you have to do it with intention. You'd have to do it one time and let it be. Notice how I just let it go. So I have to get over here a little bit. I'm gonna do that with, um, I like this pink color with some white. And I'm gonna just continue with going around the poppies and if I cover the black line or if it just doesn't look right, I can go in with my Sharpie marker. Okay, I just have to get some right there. You can tell it's not dry. It's not dry at all. So what I'm gonna do is I have the pink color on here. I wanna do some nice red bold lines. So. I like my poppies stylized with a, almost like a petal stroke in the middle of where it curves. So I'm just gonna take some straight red and do that. Here, here. May use some white, which I have to do that too. I'm going to take some more of the just straight red. Notice I'm using each side of the rounded brush. Coming down and you can make these bigger or smaller however you want to do it I want to do that first and then I'm going to do white over top so I want to clean out my brush I kind of like this color I'm going to use it over here go into that green that is it's dry now it's good and I'm gonna work it into the rest. I'm gonna put some in there. I'm working these, it's kind of like blending it in. Really like the way the color's turning out on this one. All right, okay, now what I'm gonna do is the insides of the poppies. So I'm gonna take and use the back of the brush and Get enough paint on there and 
do some spots. I want to make the white spots kind of big because I want to do a small dot of yellow in the middle to make it look like a bud. So this is just the first layer. I think I'm going to go all the way around. And I want to let this dry really well before I do the yellow dots on there. And you can put them on in any way you want to. I just like the effect of the black with the white over top. And if they touch, it's, it's okay. You don't want them too symmetrical. And I'm gonna make that one a little bit darker. I'm just making my spots. Know where I'm gonna put them. But if you go outside of the line a little bit, you can clean that up with a Sharpie marker. That's not hard at all to do. Okay, now what I want to do is the table, and I want to do a yellow and a white. So I have to make some space here. I think I'm going to use this section over here. And need to get a whole bunch of yellow because that's what's going to fit on over there and clean off my brush a little bit and get some white here. Now I have some yellow in here so I'm just going to get that too. I find this is just the fastest way and I think that's what's really important to me is just how quick can I do this because I it's like my brain keeps moving and I, I want to just get it on there all right I'm gonna come down create that edge of the base and just here we go down that way now I'm just going to come across and this line can have a lot of variation in it. It can have shadow in there too. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I want to have my brush strokes be essentially going this way to have to give it the illusion that it's a flat surface. So I'm going to dip it in yellow and then the white. Now, notice we have some purple here. That is okay. We're going to use it. And I just want to make sure it's dry though. So I'm going to work around it. And that's one thing that's really important is that if there's something that you're not sure of, just do something else. You know, don't focus on it. Don't like fret about it. Think, oh my gosh, I have to beat this and wrestle it to the ground so that I know where I'm going with this painting. Just kind of go where the flow takes you. So this is going to come around the side here. And I need more white. This is okay. That's the under the under black. I'm just going to get this on here so that I can get some more white and I'm going to use a lot of this white. Now if you get the pack 
There's plenty of paint for one painting and possibly more, depending on you know what you paint, how much paint you use. So just gonna do this layer. Now see up here we did all the different colors and now this side, the bottom of the table, is essentially just gonna be yellow and white and some purple in the foreground. I want to get some white in there. And okay, now I'm going to let it dry. Actually, I want to get some more in here. <laughs> I lied. We're going to let it dry now. Get some on there, get it off of the paintbrush. And Take a break. Okay, so now the painting is completely dry. Actually, it dried overnight, and I'm going to do another layer. So these acrylics are a little bit on the thin side, which is good because I want to keep some of the painting um, on the first level layer, but then I want to add another layer to it. So it's almost a little bit like watercolor, but not really. These are closer to a thinner acrylic than to an oil paint. What I want to do is I'm going to start off with the lightest, which is the white. I'm going to do another layer on the stripe. Then I'm going to add some yellow and go over the front. And I'll show you how I'm going to alternate the color. Then I'm going to do another layer on the poppy. So I'm going to take my rounded brush and get the white. So I'm going to do another, another coat follow along with the line. And I want to let some of the first layer show through. I don't need to cover it completely. Now this white line I want to bring down a little bit, make it a little bit longer, and come across. There we go. Now what I want to do is do some white and yellow alternating. So I'm going to go with a straight white. And remember we wanted to make the brush strokes go laterally. I did another brush stroke over the black that was kind of going through. And I'm just going with some white brush strokes all over. Going over that purple that we had from yesterday. Because what I want to create is like a shimmery effect. So what I love about this black line is that each section is like its own compartment. Now the first step is the black line. The second step is the first layer where we're just being really quick and um, really effortless with the paint. Just putting it on there, not holding back. Now this is the third layer. We're kind of tightening up a little bit and really developing each portion of the composition. So I put my first layer of white. Okay, now I'm going to go through and do more of the poppies. I'm going to use the red, the yellow, and the white, and do another layer. See how the yellow is really coming out in the poppy going over top of the red that I did the last time. Going around the poppy, I want to grab some more white and do the red, the yellow, and the white. And all the way around, get all the poppies. And then I might go back in with a little bit of red. I like to alternate layers so that you see the previous layer, but yet add another layer of depth. So now I'm going to get some more red and go in there with some red. And I don't want to cover up the yellow that I just did. I'm filling it in. These are so pretty. I really like them. Going around. I need more red in there. And 
it's really all about layers and building, building layer upon layer and going around. So there we have, we have um, all the poppies are finished. So now I'm going to use some of this pink and I want to go in and just kind of fill in some spots that may have been missed or have been missed I shouldn't say may have and I'm going to use that brush stroke to go into the orange. I'm going to kind of brighten this up a little bit in here. Do another layer. Get some more paint on there. I'm coming into those bold brush strokes that we did last time in here. I think uh, we're gonna do I'm gonna do another layer of the blue so I'm gonna clean off my brush so I want to take blue and white and do another layer on the base I'm gonna take some blue and put it on the plate this is all dry this is from yesterday so let me get that off let me clean this off a little bit I should have done white first you're gonna take it out of here, take it out of the white first and then the color because white to the color doesn't really matter. Okay, I want to get some of that yellow because I want to have a little bit of green in there. And it's okay that there's some red. It'll make a pretty color. All right, not dark enough. Get some more blue and come in close to the leaf. making it nice and full. The second layer makes a big difference. I want to leave some of the first layer showing on the left hand side so that it um, creates a, like a shadow effect. Now I want to take some of this blue that I like here and do another layer. I'm going to cut in a little closer with the poppy in here. The black, I'm not covering the black. And then I'm going to take the light brush stroke and go into the green. It's one of my favorite brush strokes. And then use the side of the brush and get some more white, more blue. Come over here and work it into the blue over here. And I want to keep the brush strokes. I don't want to get rid of those. I love the way brush strokes look in paintings. Sometimes I'll do like a, a bold color, but then brush strokes always make it look better. All right, now I'm gonna take a little bit of the red because I wanna go back in and do another layer of the purple. I'm gonna work it in over here. Get some more red. Do another. It's good to have some variation in The same color. Now I'm going to mix some of that blue in there. I'm going to use that brush stroke again. Come out. Come over here. Bring some of this same color. Cut close. And I'm going to do another layer over here. You don't have to color cover the whole thing. Just a little bit, just to give it some depth and texture with the color. All right. That was the second layer of the purple. Okay, now the painting is completely dry. You have to make sure it's dry. Um, I also painted my sides black, which you can paint it any color that you choose. You can do the, um, the background color or the foreground color onto the sides. I just did black because that's what I do and that's what I like, um, but it's totally up to you. Um, the next thing, the next step is to take the Sharpie marker and 
I'm going to touch up the black and do the stems. Now unfortunately the, foot the footage died from the last time so I'm just going to go through with you again how I touched up around the edges of the flowers and I don't want to do it over the whole entire thing but just the places where it gets lost and I'm doing it with a really light touch my hand is really light on the canvas I don't want to um, indent it with the weight of my arm and I'm coming down and just making it so that it looks like it's a continuous line. So as far as the stems go, I'm starting at the be in the middle of the poppy and I'm coming down into the vase. In this leaf, I came around and the stem comes up and then into the vase. With this stem, I start in the middle of the poppy and make an arch. I try not to make them a straight line up and down. This one had a nice curve to it. This one is a little bit straight up and down, but that's okay. I have this, this one right here. Then I also took another line down from the top poppy into the center of the vase. The leaf in the middle, I came up and down. Now I'm going to do a little line here for the leaf. Just a little suggestion of the interior of the leaf. This leaf I'm going to make the point a little bit sharper here. So you kind of look at it and see wherever you think you need some. I wouldn't use too much. Too much black line makes it look like a cartoon and not very um, interesting. It gets, it gets really flat, so I wouldn't go too much on this. So the last thing after I touch up all of the black line is I'm gonna sign it in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, we're on the final step. I've completed my black line, I've signed it. Now it's time for the sparkles. Now if you got the paint set that I offer, you'll get a little container, a little pot of sparkles. If not, if you have your own and you want to go buy some, I suggest um, Stickles Diamond. It's my favorite. You can get really lots of different colors, but I just prefer the diamond because it really makes the paint um, get accentuated and it looks really cool. So I'm going to use my sparkles in my little pot and what I want to do is take the paintbrush and use it like paint and go on the petals of the poppy flowers. I'm just going to paint that on there and go around. And you can also do the insides, the yellow and the white. That looks pretty cool, sparkle too. That's up to you if you'd like to do that. Thank you for joining me for our sparkling art painting tutorial. To see more of my artwork, visit nettieprice.com, go to Facebook and Instagram at Nettie Price Sparkling Art, or you can email me at netty at nettyprice.com. Thank you.